Webster Griffin uh, Tarpley is an incisive critic of the Anglo-American hegemony and activist and historian, best known for his book, George Bush, The Unauthorized Biography. He's written several books on Obama, The Unauthorized Biography, Tarpley.net. We've got him on for the rest of the hour. We'll also get to a smattering of your calls on whatever issue they are. Uh, Mike, Mary, Tony, Richard, James, I'll get to you. Jerome Corsi coming up on the latest birther issues. We'll get Tarpley's take on that as well. But Webster, you wrote this key article, U.S. and Pakistan Near Open War. You've had the U.S. helicopter attack inside Pakistan after the bin Laden thing last week. These al-CIA commandos attacking this uh, base yesterday. Uh, we've got uh, Pakistan openly in their major papers saying, yes, al-Qaeda is CIA run now. Uh, Pakistan's running to China and Russia. Hamid Ghul's come on, the former head of Pakistani intelligence, basically concurred uh, with what you're saying here. Any attack on Pakistan will be construed as an attack on China. The Chinese government has now said, this is what you talked about six months ago on this show, is where you saw the next flare-up happening in the Brzezinski model. Dr. Tarpley, we're going to break in four minutes. You've got the floor. Break down what's happening. Well, thank you, Alex. I guess the, the, um, the current situation is the following. The U.S. and Pakistan are moving towards an open shooting war. There has long been a latent war, a war going on at a very low level, but this is now escalating towards something much bigger and more visible. And it has to do with this insistence of Obama and his man on the scene now, Grossman, the guy who replaced Holbrook, the regional envoy, that they can violate the Pakistani border anytime they want to without consulting or, or even informing the Pakistani government. They can make these unauthorized raids, all on the model of this bin Laden stunt, which I guess we've amply established now as a complete fraud from beginning to end. So the big news, though, is that Pakistan does not stand alone, and that behind Pakistan, which is already a nuclear power, you've got China. And with China, you're talking about intercontinental ballistic missiles with hydrogen bomb warheads. You're also talking about two to three trillion dollars worth of U.S. securities that could be used as a strategic weapon in its own right if things got really, really extreme. Uh, the news is, uh, according to the Times of India, that the Chinese have issued this uh, ultimatum. They did it in a typical low-key, rather polite Chinese way. It was done privately. It was done during the U.S.-Chinese strategic dialogue here in Washington two weeks ago. It would have been delivered by Vice Prime Minister Wang Qishan, and it essentially was the Chinese saying to the United States, any attack by the United States on Pakistan would be construed as an attack on China. So if you attack Pakistan, you're attacking China. You quarrel with Islamabad, you got grief with, with Beijing. And um, that is a language of ultimatum that we have not heard. The last time I can find that anybody issued an ultimatum to the United States was Khrushchev in 1961. The Soviet leader during the Cuban Missile Crisis uh, so, and, and during the Berlin Crisis, which was when this was, the, the, the ultimatum was get out of Berlin in six months or else something. This is, is much more specific. It's quite, quite unusual for the U.S. to be on the receiving end. In public and officially, the Chinese foreign ministry said last Thursday that everyone must, and that's must, respect the sovereignty and the territorial integrity of Pakistan. So don't attack them and don't try to break them up. And break them up is what the United States is doing. As a token of the seriousness of the China-Pakistan alliance, when the Pakistani Prime Minister Gilani visited Beijing last week, he was given a rather, rather imposing gift. He was given 50, that's 5-0, of the most modern Chinese jet uh, fighter aircraft. This is the JF-17, and he was given 50 of them for free and right away. So essentially enough to staff a whole air fleet. This is an ultra-gigantic escalation. We're going to come back, Webster. You will continue to have the floor to break down with the precision that only you can deliver, and I mean that. Because Webster six months ago laid all this out, exactly how it would unfold, the color revolutions in the Middle East. I mean, go back and watch those shows. Listen to those shows. They're all archived at PrisonPlanet.tv. Uh, nobody's got a grasp on the geopolitical machinations of the New World Order like Dr. Tarpley, doctor of history. He's also an economist. I'm Alex Jones. This is the GCN Radio Network, GCNlive.com. Stay with us. Okay, Webster Griffin Tarpley, uh, China, 
Their government, as you mentioned, this week and last week, put out official statements. Quote, an attack on Pakistan would be construed as an attack on China. China uh, made good, even when they didn't have nuclear weapons during the Korean War, uh, to, to ready to have war, full war with the U.S. They were in North Korea, killed tens of thousands of our troops. China is well known by every geopolitical strategist. I want to see if you agree that if they tell you that they're going to do something, they will do it. Uh, and they are not to be messed with, and they see this in their sphere of influence. What does this signify that we have these cold wars that are really hot under the name of humanitarian bombings in Libya, Pakistan? The Pakistanis now in their major papers and, and the head of their uh, Pakistani intelligence, the current head coming out and saying, yes, the bin Laden thing is meant to frame us. Yes, the West is running al-Qaeda inside here uh, to try to blame it on our government to start a war. I mean, I don't think folks understand this isn't Iraq or even Iran. This is a nuclear power that fought uh, India with three to one superiority to a standstill. These people will fight, are highly motivated, tarply. I think it's an example of um, the use of irregular warfare, guerrilla warfare or terrorism beneath the nuclear threshold. The, the problem the United, the, the imperialists uh, who run this country have always had with Pakistan is that they can't attack Pakistan directly because, as you say, it's a nuclear power. You can't have a direct military attack. They can, they can respond. So what you've got to do is this subversion, terrorism, guerrilla warfare, irregular warfare. Below the nuclear threshold, they think, but of course the problem is that it always threatens to jump up above the nuclear threshold. It's also worth remembering the way the United States got in there was by an ultimatum to Pakistan. This was in September, October 2001, right? Right after 9-11, Bush called up the, the president of Pakistan at the time, Musharraf, and said, guess what, if you don't let us use your country for transit into Afghanistan, we will bomb you. And Musharraf said, okay, fine, you can come in. The U.S. was not invited. They, they basically invaded Pakistan at that time as well as Afghanistan. So what you've got now is a pattern where the U.S., according to the British press, the, the United States, the CIA, plus the Indians, the RAW, the RAW, the Research and Analysis Wing, plus the Mossad, have created their own fake counter-gang Taliban inside Pakistan. So um, it, it's, it's something that looks like the Taliban. It sounds... It's and awesome. by the way, at the Mumbai attack, what, three years ago, it later came out in the Chicago Tribune, even mainstream papers, that it was true. A CIA operative commanded the so-called people right. attacking, and the only patsy they grabbed, this was in AP, was on three different hallucinogens and didn't know who he was. And the head of Indian intelligence said that the West did it, but then he was killed that same day. So, so that was a black op. Yes, and, and that guy, David Headley, has just been on, on CBS Evening News last night. He's testifying at a trial uh, where he goes through this whole spiel. The, the Pakistanis did it. The ISI did it. And this is a DEA, CIA agent, informant, whatever he is, telling you all these things. It's, it's, it's crazy. But the, the, the Taliban counter gang, now what do they do? You, you have to look at the, the pattern of terrorism inside Pakistan is dictated by a, by a military agenda. For example, they kill a Saudi diplomat. When you kill a Saudi diplomat in Pakistan, you're attacking that Saudi-Pakistan axis that was set up by Prince Bandar during his visit to Pakistan at the end of March. They set up this mutual assistance pact, basically. If the U.S. tries to, to overthrow the Saudi royal family with a color revolution or a putsch, the Pakistanis will send a division of troops to put down the color rebellion. And the other thing is, if the United States threatens the Saudis and says, here, do what we say, or we will feed you to the Iranians, at that point, the, the Saudis can invoke the Pakistani nuclear umbrella. So this is one of the reasons the, 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 uh, the United States is so eager to, to get these Pakistani nukes uh, either destroyed or else seized by the U.S. So if you, if you go after a diplomat, you're attacking that access. Yeah, the, the big one, just in the last couple of days, after I wrote this article, there's a big attack on the Faisal Air Force Base in South Pakistan, near the ocean. Now, that happened yesterday. Stay there. We're going to come back and break down what happened there. Also, uh, the Chinese giving them the 50 high-tech aircraft. Uh, what you expect the global engineers to do next and... Uh, 
how their destabilization program's going in Libya. Uh, the announcement has now been made. We'll, we'll, we'll tell you about that coming up.